The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with the Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the MSD on 117.8. It's Tuesday, um, July uh, 9th. <laughs> Sorry, I'm recording this on Sunday, so I have to like calculate the dates. Uh, but so happy for you guys joining us. We are ready to start this day together with the Lord. Uh, we're so, so, so excited to be able to meet with you guys. Um, I think uh, day by day, I see just so much more of, of what we gain by having this segment. And so it really, really means a lot to have you guys here. So we hope that you guys can click the, the like button and to comment below. Because uh, it's different, right? It's I think it's different because this is a a channel for providence people right like people formulate communities on on youtube for different things and it's weird right because people will, will make communities over like the most random things the, 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 and honestly seemingly meaningless things but we are here gathered uh based on the word uh based on this history and trying to live this life of providence right where you know and and um and for some of you guys i think i think everyone should know but um uh, this is this might be an inter interesting question, right? Because um, there's the dictionary definition of the word providence, um, and you know you could use it in a sentence. Uh, but what does providence mean to you? What does it, what does it specifically mean to 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 you? Uh, for me, basically, it means God, you know, l working and living together with us in this history, in everything that we do, in part of our lives, right? So, uh, for me, when we talk about a, a community based on providence, uh, on even on YouTube, it's like we are basing a community uh, that is centered on God living with us and doing things together with us. So it makes a huge, huge difference with every person who listens, with every person who comments, with every person who likes, with every person who uh, contacts, you know, Pastor Sky or me or anyone who does the segments and has conversations. Uh, and this last week, I had, you know, quite a few people reach out about various things. And I was so moved. And I was so thankful for that. Uh, so subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, that is one of the biggest ways that, you know, you guys can support uh, Pastor Sky and this channel and follow us on Santa Claus and make sure to support us on Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. It was, man, this was so crazy. There is so much to share and um, and to go over this week that it's, it's beyond me. Like, um, you know, uh, it was so hard to put everything together because so much has happened, right? But the two segments that we have today, like every Tuesday, we have Bible today. All the things that are happening within this history today, uh, the things that may go in the Bible, right? And it has to be so. It has to be centered on the Word. But it's incredible because each of our experiences are unique, and I'll have a conversation topic about that today. But what the Lord does and what He says is in the Bible right even with our different experiences right i'm sure like sometimes when you listen to uh even the monday segment right when pastor sky goes over the word it's interesting right to hear um each other and pastor sky going over the word and in the same way when i hear someone else sharing about something that they realize and and, and you know with each other likewise in this kind of format as well wow we're like wow like that person realized that or that person had that situation going on in their life and the word addressed that um, and it's so shocking. For me, it's so shocking, right? Uh, and uh, for other people, it may not be shocking, but we'll get into that part too. So Bible today, the things happening in the Bible, um, I think it's such an amazing thing that we can talk about this. And uh, last but not least, we'll have 2G Talks. All right, so, all right, you know, how is everyone doing? Uh, I hope that you all, uh, you know, received the abundance of the word well. Like, I don't know how things were in each region that you were in, but, you know, this message title was about grace and truth. And it was kind of interesting. And I really, 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 really thank god for this grace um and i think in particular like um like i've been working closely with the church reps here and the leaders over the last few weeks especially and you know sometimes when i when i communicate with the leaders it's interesting because they plan really well at least that was that's what it seems like to me it seems like they plan really well so that the things that they do like match heaven's timing well 
Like, I don't know about for them from their perspective, whether they feel like they planned it well, well, or it's just that they're just doing what comes to mind. And, you know, like with everything that we do in Providence, and as long as we pray and we, we set this condition, and of course we do plan well too, that, you know, that things happen to match God's timing really well. So I don't know what it is, right? So in my mind, I'm like, dude, like this person, like is just so on sync with what God wants to do. All right, so I'll give an example, right, with the Sunday message, right? So uh, this week, it was quite a bit longer than uh, usual, right? And I think it was just so filled with abundance. Like, <laughs> I love how Pastor, Pastor Sky describes it on Monday. He said, it's so hungry, right? It's such a hungry message, right? It's, it's, um, and that contains so much, right? I think that contains so much more than saying that it's a long message or it's a bountiful message. It's an abundant message. We've heard that so many times, but when you say it's a hungry message, that descriptor like contains a lot of things. It's like, it's very eager it contains a lot it wants to give so much right because it's like this powerful force right hunger sounds more than bountiful it sounds more than abundant so you know i like the fact that he uses that word um yes yeah, yeah, so it was, really was that message but you know what with what we were preparing uh one of the things that you know was going on in the background was um uh we listened to a, a testimony from uh something he's doctor in korea and it was such a great testimony, right? But it was it was long, right? And so, um, in uh, the our AP team over in Korea, like got to listen to it live, and we we uh, those of us who can match Korea's timing were were able to listen to it. It was really long. It was really late at night, um, but uh, they were saying like since not everyone listened to it, Eddie, like could you kind of prepare like uh, at least some parts to share. Um, you know, based on that testimony on Sunday. So we had that in mind, like from like a couple days ago. And so I was like going over on, on Saturday and like kind of like uh, trying to put together something that I could share because it was so good, but it was very long. Um, and so I was like, okay, like, like I was really thinking about this. How can I prepare for this well? And in the midst of preparation, uh, you know, I was messaging the church. Right? I was like, oh, like I remember this part. I remember this part. And they were sharing like, oh, actually... We're thinking like maybe we can do this uh like uh, it's not that we're gonna do it the the following but maybe we won't do it this week because the message is uh quite long right and one of the new things that we did like for this month of july uh we've been using this uh one rental space like on sundays uh so far uh for the last two years or so but for this month right we have many visitors like those who went to korea so we decided to get one place that's a little larger that can accommodate everyone so like at least for this one month let's all get together in this place and so we went and because july is the month of prayer as was uh, announced we we're like okay let's uh, try for everyone to get to church by 9 30 and all of the the preparation for church will be done by 9 30 so at 9 30 let's pray let's prepare and at 9 50 we'll all uh, pr uh, pray together and then we'll go into the service and i think it was such a graceful time right that we got to do this because i'll be honest because we've been um renting hourly on sundays our rentals begin like pretty late and i think they end quite early so it's not to say that we're rushed, but I think people have this feeling like that we can't be there early and that we can't leave late. So at church, like for services, and I think everyone's gone through this period where, they, where we feel like we have to prepare spiritually. And afterwards, we want to have a time of uh, both a prayer, a mingling with members, of simmering on the word and those kinds of things. Right. So when you're kind of when you feel like you're on a time crunch, it's kind of hard to do that. Right. Um, and so uh, this time it was different. Um, and I think that all of that work like all of those steps like renting out this new place praying from 9 30 telling us about this uh about the, the the testimony versus about the word all of that helped us today to receive the word better like i was so focused i was so ready because I, I wanted to hear this message so much uh and i was like taking notes the whole time and you know sometimes when you hear the word that it's a uh, it's a hungry message or it's a long message you're like kind of like oh my gosh like am i gonna be ready today but um like like uh, when you are uh, like and when you're taking notes and you're listening very carefully, the time flies. Right. And this is something that everyone experiences. So I'm a huge proponent that no message is long. Right. As long as people are ready to listen to it and as long as the message is good. Right. Like even like the preparatory message. Right. About uh, how 
ready is the audience and how well does the the preacher del deliver if all of those things work like man eight hour message go ahead you know like people in the past like from the the, the early days of providence they talk about like, oh yeah something used to preach for like eight hours and we used to sit there and listen and it was a great time but we can't do it anymore because people aren't strong enough right like they may not say that last part like that but sometimes that's the insinuation uh, and it's not like pointing fingers they're they're like even saying about themselves right they're like i don't think i could do that anymore but the reality of it is people can do that should we do it all the time maybe not <laughs> but i know people can do this because even growing up as a kid uh as a second gen there were times we could do that we couldn't do it all the time. Sometimes we would fall asleep even during like a 20 minute, 30 minute message. But there were times when the word hit powerfully. Uh, and even as a kid, even before I entered my teenagers, uh, uh, there were times where like the message just struck so hard that like no matter how long it was, right, it really resonated with me. And it doesn't happen all the time. And each person has different places and times that they're in. But really, all of this uh, work is really important. Uh, but yeah, I was like so shocked by the word. And so, uh, you know, we had an incredible message. There were so many things going on. Um, and I hope, really hope that everyone had a, a grace filled week last week. Right. And, and I was really, really moved by this. Uh, something funny that I was like, thinking during the message. Like, I don't know if this, uh, how many people this applies to and what, if this applies to you, like what it's like for you, right? Like I'm, I'm actually, I was really curious about this. I didn't get to talk to the one person whom this applied to, uh, but you know, there's like some words that we use in Providence, like e even with the message title, this week was really uh, short, right? It's simple, it was grace and truth. And there are certain words that we use um, and there are people who have like the name, right? Like there are a lot of people in Providence with the name Grace, right? So like, I was like, wow, okay, so we know that this is going to be a very hungry and a very bountiful message. And the word Grace is, came up like so many times, right? So I was like, in my mind, I was thinking like, hmm, are, like how often, like when you hear your name, like in the message, like in this kind of context, like does it kind of like, like stick out to you? Like, does it feel like, you know, um, they're calling out your name or does it feel like it's talking to you, talking about you? And like, in what sentences does it feel like it's, it is like that. And other times it's just feel like a word, right? Just, it, just a part of the, the sentence and you just don't think about it. I was just so curious, right? I think I was especially curious because of the nature of the word and just how, uh, filled and, and great and, and um, bountiful it was where I was like, wow, like, what does it feel like to have your name be called like that over and over and over again? Right. It's, it's, it's silly. And we know we're, it's not like we're talking about that grace, but just thinking about that, like, you know, it was just something like funny I was thinking about. Uh, but yes, incredible message. Uh, that was one of the bountiful things. Uh, so many things going on. Right. So I hope that each person had a great week. Like here um, uh, in the month of July, we are hiking every Saturday. And so this was our second hike so far. And even here in San Francisco, it gets uh, quite warm on the summers too. I think not so much as other parts of the world, but it's, it was quite hot the last couple of weeks. So uh, the first week when we had the hike, it was great. I had some of my friends from the world come. So it was like some newcomers there. And we had some of our, our newcomers who are learning join too. It was a great time. But in order to accommodate everyone, especially the newcomers and the people who don't hike, uh, we set it kind of like it early midday and man, it got blazing and I was like sunburned. So, th uh, so this time around we hiked like within San Francisco, which is always foggy and really cool. And we, we went an hour earlier than we did last time. So it was a very different hike, very great uh, and a really amazing time. So much sharing. We testified about Wormingdong, the stories that we heard, the different things that we experienced. We talked about what our AP team experienced, like all of those kinds of things. Um, so that was the hike. And also this week, I finished translating the, the peace soccer book, right? Like, so I'm, I'm like so happy about this. I think uh, I, I don't normally talk about things like this with, with uh, emotion and excitement and like want to like reveal this, but it was such a tremendous like task. Like I, I'm not talking about the importance, but it wasn't something that I, I thought that I could um, easily finish. Like I, I wanted to do this for years, but even like two years ago, I, can't imagine having worked on this to this degree and to this point right and i, I wanted to finish two weeks ago but i, I got kind of lazy too but there's an amazing story with that too and um and i can already feel what i gained from translating this book 
And, um, you know, it's like the scriptures from uh, this week's message about 1 John 14. Um, and uh, not first John, John 1 14, right? That uh, becoming the living embodiment of the word, right? We know that something has done that, that Jesus has done that. The, cent the central figures in the Bible, like Moses, they were the people who became this living embodiment of the word. But the call that they have for the followers at each time, those who follow the central figure and those who learn from them uh, to become like God, each of us have to become that living embodiment of the word. And so when I when I like worked on peace soccer and I read through the whole thing and I got to read something names like mentality behind soccer, all the things that he learned, uh, the shimjung of heaven with related to soccer, the grace that we receive through soccer that we have to repay, like I was like, wow, like this is changing my mentality. And I'll get into some of the stories with that too. All right, so you know, so much planned for this coming few months. I really hope that everyone's having a great time in each place and that we get excited, we get um, good things happening because um, one of the things that we talked about from uh, this Saturday when we went to hike, um, I like this happens so much too, and this is so shocking. And this is also another way the Trinity worked that I'm really grateful for. But this wasn't the original hiking location that I had in mind. But like I was like kind of uh, I shared a couple options with the new uh, with the members, and the members pointed at this one, and I didn't remember like um leaving this on the list i actually thought i took this option out but when then when the member mentioned it because my goal is for everyone to go hiking and to enjoy it and to do this together with the trinity so it doesn't really matter for me where we go right so i filtered it as much as possible i'm like okay i will really i really want to listen to the members make sure somewhere that we all want to go um but they mem the member chose this one and i didn't know that it was on the list and when we went there it turns out that the newcomer that came was already planning on coming to this park that day and so like it was easy for the newcomer to come like the newcomer enjoyed it we had uh like many conversations and we got to um also let the newcomer lead um not a part of the hike but this uh this park is called the golden gate park and i would say it's like it's like a big park in the middle of the city it's kind of like um uh, like central park in, in new york right it's really big it has so many it has a lot of things it has nature but also has museums and other things and so the newcomer said oh i was actually going to come here today because the museum that we park next to is free for uh bay area residents on saturday so we're like oh wow like no way and then so after the hike we went with her to the museum too and she showed us around and i think you know there's a joy in following people but you also gain so much when you feel like you can help people and like lead the way and kind of be there for people. So for the newcomer who's been like learning so much for, over the last few months, I think it was really a, a good time for her to like show us around and take us. And so it was a really great time. And so one of the things that the church rep said, like seeing all of this is that, you know, the Holy Spirit gives like sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, but a lot of times she gives universal, uh, what's the word, inspiration. Right. She uh, inspires multiple people with seemingly related things and like it's all connected. It's different, but it's connected and it leads to like a um, like the, the Trinity working. Right. And, and, and on Earth, what that looks like is that like um, things come together in a way that's like unbelievable. Right. So we had that. So I really like that um, that that phrase universal inspiration. Right. And so I think this is something that I'll, I'll use more often, too. And uh, today there'll be multiple instances like in the sharing. So we'll get into Bible today. We'll get into 2G talks. But uh, once again, we will be having our first break for today. And I really, really enjoy doing this, like over, like going over the, the new songs of this history and going over at least some of the lyrics, like something that inspired me. And so as you guys listen to it, uh, feel free to like sing the song afterwards or before or even look up the lyrics, too. Um, like I think. Many people, many of us have used like the MP4 uh, videos and that all have the quote from something at the, the end of it too. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, you know, you guys can look those up, but you know, I think everyone knows, right? So there's kind of a quote from something at the end and there's like a, a great MP4 video that, you know, our, our, our members have put together. And so I like, there's different things to like. I like, I like the lyrics sometimes. I like the melody sometimes. I like the, 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 uh, the tempo of the song sometimes. I love the quotes, you know, um, especially if it relates to something that I'm doing. And so I love doing this. I love going into this, right? So the first sing song that we sang for this Sunday, it was um, Get Out of Sin, Fight the Devil, and Win. 
So that's going to be your first break for today. And I think this is a song that I always like, right? And I think I tend to like a lot of the upbeat songs. And this is a powerful song, right? It's like, and then like, if you think about it, right? I think if you're too conscious and like, if you like, especially if you're conscious of like uh world of the world, right? I think this is one of those songs that can sound strange, right? But there's so much power to this song. I think, I don't know about for you, but I can't help but to sing it like really as strongly as I can. Yes, like, yes. Like fight against the devil, leave your sins behind and win, right? Like it's so exciting, right? It, when If you want to sing it like that. Uh, but one of the things that came up, like aside from the the fight against the devil part, there are two things that really struck out to me because uh, we were talking about this with the members uh, during the hike. One thing is the 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 Nomer uh, King of Kings, right? Our Lord is the King of Kings. Like that sentence reached out to me, um, and I think this this name, King of Kings, this title, it wasn't something that I thought about until like a couple years ago when I heard a psychologist talk about it, but uh, like a non-provident psychologist talk about it. And then after that, like recently thinking about the central figure lesson and then even the John the Baptist uh, story, which something you uh, referenced again on, on Sunday, um, it made me think about this title once again, like King of Kings, right? And, and in, in terms of central figures, right? Like, even the central figures of the Bible, like and central figures is not a common word in English, right? So I don't know for you guys, when you heard the lesson central figures, like what you even thought of that term, or even now, like if, if it's a term that really, really, really uh, sticks with you, because I, even as I was actually translating peace soccer, this similar word to central figures was actually used quite a number of times, like in the, in the peace soccer book, right? It, it, it pretty much like if I had to to explain it and to draw it out, it, like a, a phrase that they use for a central figure is pretty much, is it like in peace soccer, oftentimes something said, like the person that heaven focuses on, right? And then so like putting that together into a title, it became a central figure, right? It says the person that, that um, heaven focuses on, right? So that kind of helps us to see it, right? So the person that heaven focuses on, um, uh, you know, is a central figure. And even though not all of the central figures in the Bible were actually kings by title, the thing about the central figure is that like they were like a king of faith, right? In one way, right? Like they were the central person that heaven focused on. And when you look at kings, this is some this is something that the psychologist said, right? Like that a king is someone who at least has like one kingly quality, right? To become a king, you have to be the best, at least in one category. So when you look at all of these central figures, all the kings in the Bible, they all had something that pleased God's heart, right? One way or the other, right? Abraham had faith. David had uh, obedience and, 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 um, <laughs> and I guess a lot of things, right? Joshua had bravery, right? Uh, Moses had uh, the law and obedience, like all of these things, right? So each person has one trait, maybe, maybe more, maybe multiple, but like at, they at least have this one thing that heaven really liked about them. And right? there's ma ma multiple things that we could say about that. So then what does the title King of Kings mean? Right? King of Kings means that of all of these kings, that all have have are the best in this category he is a person who is a king of over all of them he is a person who is a king over all of these qualities he has all of these qualities and that's who christ was that's who the savior is that's who the person the lord uses and i was so moved by that and once again this goes back to john verse one uh, uh chapter one verse 14 but becoming this living embodiment of the word that's who the king of king is and there's more that we can share about that and actually there's another realization from the get out of sin fight the devil and win song uh, but i will just let you guys listen to it to have your own inspirations um like i'll give i'll give a clue as to what my other inspiration it was about the part about um like they have prepared everything for us, even table before our enemies, right? There was something related to that for me that was quite deep. And so, um, especially if you're thinking about songs and, and parts of the lyrics that maybe aren't as common in the world, I think that can help you think more deeply about the value of the song. It's actually the things that are different from the world that are valuable, right? Sometimes we may be embarrassed even of the things that seem so different but it's actually the things that 
are different that produce a value because otherwise you know the songs of the world um would be just as valuable so what makes our songs more valuable the things that it's different in right because it's because those are the things that god and the holy spirit and the holy son have touched upon to make it different so anyways we'll go into the first break of today with the song uh get out of sin fight the devil and win Against the devil, leave our sins behind and win. Fight against the senderers, believe the Lord and win. Disregard the tricks and lies of senderers and overcome. Our Lord, He is the King of all kings. Our Lord, He will win. Those who will stand with Him on His side, they will win. They will surely succeed God's prepared everything Tables for us Before our enemies We will fight slanderers Satan to this rapture history Surely will be fulfilled God the Spirit and the Son help us They are on our side Always pray prayers of power Use the word, it's a sword We will win, let's give glory to them Fight against the devil, leave our sins behind and win Fight against the slanderers, believe the Lord and win Disregard the tricks and lies of slanderers and overcome Our Lord, He is the King of all kings Our Lord, He will win Those who will stand with Him on His side they will win, they will surely succeed God's prepared everything Tables for us before our enemies We will fight slanderers Satan to this rapture history Surely will be fulfilled God the Spirit and the Son Help us They are on our side Always pray prayers of power Use the word, it's a sword We will win Let's give glory to them God the Spirit and the Son help us They are on my side Always pray prayers of power Use the word, it's a sword We will win, let's give glory to them We will win, let's give glory to them Okay, so that was our first break with Get Out of Sin, Fight the Devil, and Win. I hope that you guys had, you know, some inspiration um, and you guys enjoyed it. You know, if you have something that you want to share, please feel uh, feel free to, you know, 
I think, you know, I can understand what it's like to be in the perspective of a listener. And even though you feel good and even though you have something, I know how much of a hassle it might be at times to actually do the work of writing a comment below. But even even something like even if your comment seems insignificant, it makes a huge difference. I'm like, whoa, there's a there's a person listening and they have something to say, right? So it makes a huge difference, right? So um, like if you do have anything, no matter how trivial it is, like even if you don't want to type it out in, in with correct, you know, grammar or full punctuation, like feel free to. Uh, but anyway, so with that, we'll go into the first segment for today with um, uh, Bible today. And so there's a couple things, like I said, there's like so many things that happen from this week. And um, one of the things that happened, and this is something that's happened for me a lot, but this is so different from person to person that I really felt that this would be interesting to talk about because I'm curious to know what side of the fence you're on, right? <laughs> and, and I'm sure, no, I, I can't say that it's, it's just one fence because I think in different circumstances, people feel differently, right? Like when you're shocked, like what are you shocked by? Because this is something that for me, uh, even to this day, uh, has never ceased to amaze me and it still shocks me whenever this happens. And the thing is, uh, it doesn't stop happening. I think when like you're so invested in the word, this happens often, right? What is this thing? It's like when something uh, in the word uh, has to do exactly with your situation. And more specifically, when like something that you've talked about or that you experienced or that you feel like would never come up in the context of the word comes up like almost verbatim right and this has happened for me like you know like it's happened like your whole life right so i guess because of that it could you know not be a shocking thing for someone right but for me it's such a shocking thing even though it's happened you know our throughout our entire life sure yeah but like when it happens it's so shocking right so that happened in this week's message and you know what it was like specifically um like while we were on our hike like this time when i went to korea uh, we listened to the testimony of the symbolic pine tree and about like various works in, in Wanmyeongdong, especially that something you did during COVID because those are the ones that are, are, are less known by a lot of people. Right? So I listened to those kind of stories while I was there. And there are some things that I think are not common knowledge for a lot of people. Like one of the things uh, are about like trees and rocks. Like people don't know a lot about trees and rocks. Like I don't know a lot about trees and rocks, right? Um, and even a lot of people who do the work on these trees and rocks before they start to do the work, um, they may not know a lot, right? Like, you know, who comes to Providence being a tree expert? Like how many people are there really who know a lot about trees, right? So uh, this time when I went to Korea, because I've been like teaching more and like uh, trying to learn the word more and when somebody talks about these things, I want to learn more. Like I was more invested in these uh, stories and these testimonies. And so the person who shared with us a symbolic pine tree story, he explained in great detail about like what makes a tree valuable, what kind of things they have to do, like about like if something has a form in it right this week something we talked about feng shui so even that's part of this connection right like about what makes it valuable right what makes them something a uh a uh, propitious like a, a very fortunate lucky a, a fortunate and good spot right all of those kinds of things right? what makes something good right in nature um and so uh, that's something that we learn right all the things about trees and so we were thinking, uh, talking about that so i was sharing these stories with the 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 members during the hike and with the newcomer and so one of and in a sim like while i'm talking about these trees like one of the other things uh like um, and I really hope that everyone can listen to the symbolic pine tree story too. Right? But one of the things that happened in the midst of that story is that something talks about the the bachelor jung legend, and just like about like trees and rocks, bachelor jung like that legend is something that I think um, for people outside of Korea is not very well known. So uh, maybe like up until this point, because you've heard it, like you've uh, f uh, formulated that connection to it, but. Uh, I think we don't understand the um, the level of like what this means in Korea. And so the pastor like helped explain that to us too. And I was really grateful that he did because he was so good at picking up what I didn't know because I, I was transiting, right? So the pastor, when he was sharing it, um, he explained it in a way that we can know. So Bachelor Jung is someone in Korea who is like, um, in, in many ways, like bigger than like uh, the prophecy of Christ. 
right? Because he's, as Sun Tzu mentioned, he's someone who's supposed to come and save the, the country, save like, you know, all the people of the country and like redeem it and, uh, and stuff like that. And some people and, and some faiths like in Korea, uh, exactly like something you mentioned, like, um, and even though it was kind of different, but uh, some people take it even further than what something he said, right? So he said like hey, something talked about how like the Confucianists like wait for the next like Neo Confucius, like the person who's gonna like take the Confucian uh, tradition to the uh, philosophy to to the next level. Uh, Buddhists wait for the next coming of Buddha. Uh, you know, Christians wait for the second coming of Christ. Like each of those kinds of things, right? So he mentioned each of those things specifically. But in Korea, there are many people who believe that Bachelor Jung. Who's who? Like, there's several, you know, stories of of this uh, legend. Uh, there are people who believe that he is go, he the person who is Bachar Zhang will be the Neo Confucius, will be like, you know, Buddha, will be Christ, will be the second coming of Christ. Um, and so, yeah, like there are people who take it to that de degree, like they kind of like put all of this together, right? The person who is this will also be the savior. The person who is, uh, who is bachelor Jung will also be like, who is Christ, right? It's like, they, they say that it's the same legend kind of thing, right? So uh, the pastor explained it like this. And so I shared that with the, uh, the members on Saturday and with the newcomer, because it was something I didn't know. Right, and so I was sharing about the Bachelor Jung legend, and I mentioned those specific people: the Confucius example, the Buddha example, and the Christians, and the the the, the Second Coming of Christ example. And so when something you said in the message, I was so blown away. Right, that is such an obscure and like like seemingly like like uh, what do you even call it? It's just like an an obscure and uh, I don't want to say random, but like 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 unlikely i guess maybe unlikely is a good word like unlikely thing to talk about so this is one of those examples of like like the message about something in like the trinity like just talking about something that we were literally talking about in a different context that like you would never suspect to come up in the, in the words so i was like shocked i was floored and so like even that was great and so i want to share that story with you guys too but aside from that so this this is the interesting part so this is where i want to know where you guys are and like whether you find like yourself on one side of the fence or another on another and i i ignore before explaining what the thing is i acknowledge that on different topics you may be different. Like on, on some topics, you may be shocked and on other topics, you may be shocked. You may not be shocked. People are, are impressed, shocked, influenced by much different things, right? So uh, for me, whenever this happens in the world, I'm like so shocked, bro. I'm like, whoa, like the Trinity are, are so powerful. Wow, like they're all knowing, like how can this happen, right? It's crazy, right? But um, like if I'll give an example, like for um, some people like my mom, uh, I don't even bother sharing these things with her sometimes because for her, it's like so obvious, like, right. It's, it's so obvious that the Trinity work in this way, that they would say the thing that's like in your heart that applies to you, that the message at times, like, um, that it will, it will do this to all the members. Like maybe there's also an, an, and uh, even though it's a very specific example, it will have a, once again, as we, we use this phrase again, universal um man, what was the word universal inspiration a universal inspiration for people and they they may all have that same reaction so so my mom was like completely on the other side of like not being shocked when this thing happens but for me every time it happens in the message i'm like so shocked and i think you know both reactions are valid and you know in different circumstances we we, we react to differently like, i like i've i've heard some people like say like wow like during a part of the message where i'm just like thinking like oh yeah that's a very like that's a very it, it makes total sense like, and i'm just casually listening or casually taking down notes so it's not something that that floors me but something like this is something that floors me right so um like uh from, for my mom like think taking it as a very face value thing i think i interpret it two ways right and i, t I interpret it like i will give the positive right way right of both sides right if you're shocked that means you're very impressed and that you're like uh, appreciating the magnitude to which the trinity are working right in order to make this happen the magnitude to the truth the validity the uh the working of the trinity and of the lord and of what something is doing and so that's the positive of being like shocked and impressed by these things the 
other hand, other side of people who are like, yeah, of course that would happen, right? Are people who like acknowledge God and the Trinity, like no matter what, like regardless, right? They know that the Trinity are this powerful and they work that way. So that's the positive, right? So I won't go into the negatives because you may think that they're negatives, but I'm curious to know how people respond and whether in, uh, in what kind of circumstance and, and context and what of the word has something like that happened to you? Right. Because I, I know that it's happened to everyone. Right. Like whether it had to do something specifically to do with your with your situation um, that that no one could know about that something could not know about, like physically, at least at, at least have heard of uh, uh, related to you. But like came up in the message and were you shocked by it or are you someone who's like, duh, <laughs> like, of course. Right. Of course. Like, like, you know, God you know does this and he is this and he does this with the word and i and i i guess i don't want to trivialize people who are like that because like i said i think it's a, it's a very positive thing too but uh to wrap up this segment i think i do want to share like i guess uh, a, a, a wrap up right an ultimate realization to this part um the thing that i got from being shocked like this and hearing this part of the word and oh man there's so much we could go into the message itself right so i'm glad pastor scott kind of went point by point into like uh, throughout from from start to finish of the message too um and so uh, the thing that i realized is that it is natural to help each other to understand the word more and that might seem like a very basic thing but it's it's uh i say this because uh, it's not easy all the time but from this example of like someone being shocked by something and someone not and of someone explaining something that we may not be familiar with or we may not have thought about through these conversations like even when we were listening to pastor sky yesterday talking about the monday uh, uh in word review like uh, there were parts that i was like um i thought of similar to him and there are other parts that he talked about that i didn't really think about and there are things that I thought about that he didn't cover, right? So in this way, each of us have different things that we take from the word. So it's natural to help each other to understand it, right? And uh, because there's so much we don't know, right? Because God's uh, wisdom is infinite and there's this universal inspiration. And so our specific inspiration, the specific grace that we might receive may be different from another person's grace. So we have to talk about it. But I see that uh, I say that that it's natural to help each other. Uh, because um, I had an, uh, on Sunday after I came back home, I was like speaking to my mom about something. And um, at first it was a very difficult conversation. And um, it was something that I didn't really want to talk about. But after talking to her like for quite some time, I realized, wow, actually I gained a lot from this conversation. And I know my mom did as well. And so after that even though it was touchy it was long and at first it was kind of kind of hard i realized from that i was like wow like we gained so much by having this conversation what was so easily natural to me was not to her and what was so easily natural to her was not natural to me and so it's natural to help each other un to understand the word and i i say this specifically because of this case of this example of it not being easy to do because there are times that it's easy, it's easy to do right it's easy to talk about the word right but even in these difficult times especially when one person doesn't understand it's natural to help each other to understand and so i hope that we each of us will you know take the time to do that you know with our families with our friends with each other and continue to testify about the word in all the ways that are possible um and related to this there was something in the message that something you said that this part really stuck out to me too right and so um uh like it may not have stuck out to other people and so uh, this is something i i uh was so fascinated by too right so something when he was talking about warming he was talking about the feng shui experts right and so i'm actually really interested in um I don't want to say in feng shui because I think that sounds like <laughs> I don't know like how you guys feel or about what Pastor Sky feels. Uh, but um, things being done in the optimal way in many different fields, even related to geography of landscaping of uh, of interior design. I believe that that's true, right? There, there's because I believe there's an optimal way to do things because there are suboptimal ways. There are terrible ways that you can set up your room, that you could set up, you know, a place like Wenmingdong, that you could set up like a country, that you could set up a house, that you could do all these things. So because there's a wrong way to do it, there are better ways and maybe a right way to do it, all right? So when something is talking about these feng shui experts, one of the things that he said is that uh, 
all these things. Oh, no, he didn't say this. He said, uh, experts tend to know well about like a thing being discussed. But one thing that you see about experts is they, they tend to use language that is like kind of uh, known within their field. Right, so if a feng shui expert, because most of us are not feng shui expert, except maybe now after listening to the word, <laughs> but most of us are not feng shui experts. So if a feng shui expert tried to explain to us the value of warming them using their vocabulary, language, and the things that they normally talk about, we may not understand. Um, and so this is another reason why it's natural for us to try to help each other to understand. And this is another occasion. It's not just about sharing because sometimes when we share, we have those moments where for us, it was such a big, impactful, shocking, moving thing. But for the listener, it was like, oh, yeah, duh, like kind of thing. Right. So it's not just about um, trying to explain in another way, but it's like helping each other to understand in a way that makes sense to um, to that person so that that person can have the same kind of value takeaway realization and you know oftentimes it doesn't happen from a to b right you don't do this sharing and they realize right away sometimes it doesn't happen that way sometimes it does right? like if you were interested in something but it wasn't clear and then someone explains you're like wow like god provided the answer to this like this but other times you may do the sharing and then that person may go on their way and then like they have an event or like God uses something or the message comes out and they're like, dude, like I remember this. Right. And that was for me, like with the, um, the bachelor Jung legend and the Confucius Buddha and the, the, the second coming of Christ thing, uh, and, and listening and hearing in the word on Sunday. So that was like, so shocking for me. Um, and so great for me. And it took some time, right? I heard that story so long ago while I was in Korea and I had this shocking, like revelationary moment like uh while well, like this at this point in july yeah so uh, that's bible today you know there's so many different things that we can talk about uh, but we'll get into the final segment for today um and before we do that we'll enter the second break and i i was so moved by uh this song like I, I don't know how you guys did this song. I don't I actually don't know if all churches sang this song. Like I don't know if it was just us or if it was everyone. Um and maybe it was everyone, right? Because it's it's July 7th and so we had that 70 day uh, prayer condition. And so maybe uh, especially related to the message about everything that the Trinity has done and everything that's something that doesn't, maybe this is something that we all listen to. But for the last song we sang this to a video of all the like of something doing various things like something doing like playing soccer playing volleyball writing the word praying singing uh dancing and 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 uh being with us and all of those kinds of things and so uh, i was i think <laughs> you know when we see that we're automatically moved right like you know sometimes we see just the lyrics on the screen but when we saw this i was so moved and it's been a long time since i've seen this played during an official service so i was like so moved too so the song was a song called Thanksgiving of Love, right? So they we, we listened to this and it was over the video, something doing all of these things for us. And man, like, uh, like for me, there was a part like, uh, like of all the things that we saw, there was a shot, there was a close up shot of um, just something with hands, like writing, um, like writing the word on paper. <laughs> for me, I, I don't know, like, I seen that part. I was uh, so moved. Like I, man, I was like, you know, welling up with like tears. Like seeing that part. Like there's so many other things that he was doing, but like that part, like it just it really got me. Cause um, like after reading Peace Soccer, and um, and translating it, like there was something that he wanted. He he made me want to do like this past week, and so I was doing this a lot. He, like I saw how much work he put in, like. You know, I, I think I may have shared this on MSD 117.8 before, but this is one of the greatest things I gained from Peace Soccer. And he said that um, even if you do something, even if you kick a ball for 10 years, and even if you kick the ball 10,000 times, 20,000 times, you know, millions of times, uh, maybe not millions of times, but like, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of times, it still won't go where you want it to go, even after 10 years. And so you have to kick it like a million times in order for it to go where you want it to go. 
And so he was telling us that, you know, life is difficult and to do anything of merit, you have to try hard. And, you know, there's like various ways that that was expressed, like all throughout the book. And so for me, like uh, even physically, uh, it's something that while I've been working on the book that I want to do, I want to practice soccer. I want to do this, but I knew that I wasn't going to be good right away. And even running, right? Running. Like, I don't know how you guys feel about running. Like I generally hate running. I hate, but I love running. <laughs> I love running hypothetically, but in reality, I hate running. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Like, okay, I don't know what your relationship is with running. I know it's so beneficial. I want to be better at it. I used to be pretty decent in some ways, but it's so challenging sometimes, and it is a mental game, right? Like, you're not telling your body to move, you're telling your mind that you can move. Right? So sometimes that's easy to do, or sometimes when you have that runner's high, or you're hyped up, or you're in the middle of playing soccer, moving around, playing a game, it may be easy, but other times you're like, I don't want to go out. I don't want to put on my shoes. I don't want to run. There's no purpose to running. Like I'm just struggling. So there's like those kind of things, right? But hearing some of these things, I was like, man, I need to keep going. Even if I break down, I may, I will break down. My mind will break down. I will want to do it. I will not want to do it. It won't work out perfectly if I do it a couple of times. But I saw like from his, his, uh, from his mentality that, Wow, he wants us to do this 10,000 times, 20,000 times until we get good at it. And, you know, he wasn't talking about running specifically, but just like with soccer, with faith, we will fail. It is hard. We do it. To do it right, we have to do things in this way. And in order to make our faith strong, we have to do this. And so, uh, like, hearing this and also, I, I, you know, we talked about the the uh, testimony for something's doctor. And something's doctor, like, testified about a lot of this kind of similar thing, like, about all the things that something does. And with the message this week, I'm, I'm, I'm sure everyone knows, right? Like all the things that they did, like even Jesus saying that, like he healed 10 people of leprosy, but only one came back. And it was a Samaritan person. It wasn't even someone who believed in God, right? Like, like that, like all of the things that they did for us, right? So when I saw the image of something in, and when I saw him writing another word, I was like, man, like, like, wow, like I was just so floored uh, by that. So Anyways, like, like I was just so moved by that. Um, and I, I don't know if everyone like uh, sang the same song on, on Sunday, but I hope that, you know, uh, you guys did. And um, like one of the things that I really liked from this song, and I think this was contained in the message, but, you know, singing it helps us to think about it in a different way, was that um, it says that all of the money in the whole world could not repay that grace. And if we don't think about it carefully, that seems obvious. And we've sang this song thousands of times, right? All, all across the world, collectively, from the times that we've sang it. And it seems easy to say, but after listening to this word, we, we really saw that, right? God doesn't just give us grace because he has all the grace. But he does it because he has a purpose for it. And he wants us to do something. And it's kind of like an investment. And he's giving something to us. Something that uh, it costs him something to give to us. And so what we repay is not with material goods and money, time, sacrifice, the bleeding of, of sheep and cows and goats and lambs. But we repay it with love, loving our whole lives, obedience to that. And so that part of the song really moved me, right? That we, re we will repay with love, with, with love. Um, the doctor shared some of these doctors shared um, that when something went off to the place that he's at, he shared two things, right? One thing was about the, uh, the, the one thing that he felt, um, uh, I don't want to say disappointed, but that he wished that he could do was to fulfill that million member ministry, million people uh, evangelizing a million people. Um, and that he said, we have to do it through the internet now. Um, the other thing that he said was that, you know, in this kind of situation, uh, it's not that things don't aren't working out because God can't help. It's because his heart is not moved to help because we are, we don't live repaying that grace because the people of Providence, the nine out of 10 who believe who were healed are not repaying that grace. And the only way to repay that grace 
is through the thanksgiving of love. It's not with cows and sheep's sacrifice and giving. It's not about the material goods, but it's about love. Anyways, with that, you know, we'll get into the second break of today. And so this this will be with the um the uh the the English version that we have prepared. But if you weren't able to sing the song on Sunday, I hope that you can imagine something doing all these things, playing soccer, playing volleyball, writing the word, singing, dancing, smiling, standing on stage, all those things, all the things that you saw, and that you can enjoy the song and sing this together with it.
Yes, we will give thanks and glory you know, for all our days. Uh, truly thankful to God for this. And so uh, we have our final segment for today. Uh, we have 2G Talks, but I'll keep it kind of short. Um, there's so many things with this, but I think I want to do two things. Uh, one, uh, I want to keep on that conversation that Pastor Sky had yesterday uh, with regards to connecting old and, and, and new right like because i think this is a very very important things and he had a lot of important things to share and i'm sure each person here has their own realizations about this right um and i think you know what he shared was very practical and uh it it's two things even with this right like one it's very it's a necessary thing and it is not easy because um people have different levels of experience and right the adults do too and it's interesting because in order to create change you need to be positive that it will work right but if you've seen too many things that that don't work then maybe you feel like it won't work and so you do need experience right so when if you're talking to someone that's like so far beneath you in terms of experience i can totally get why it would be hard to draw that connection so i really do agree th agree with him and i think this is something that we've talked about even with second gen i think it's not a matter of age and it's not a matter of when you came in providence um and and um i think you know even as uh, old people even as people who've been in providence a long time you can still be inexperienced right so it's not a matter of time it's a matter of experience like how much you've done um, and, um, it's not, a and I'm not saying that in a cold and, and, um, and, 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 uh, apathetic way, but, uh, like how much have you gone through? How much are you willing to do? And like, even among second gen, there are people who've gone through a lot. And so, um, you can talk to people, uh, easier, uh, who have gone through those things, who've gone through the similar experiences. And so, uh, both, uh, the, uh, second gen and the youth and the i don't want to say just second gen but younger people they have to experience a lot so that they can communicate with both young and old and you also need to continue to have those dialogues because i learned so much by speaking to uh, people who uh, are 10 20 years older than me and i do that a lot right because a lot of the people in providence that i run with are 10 20 years older than i am uh, maybe 30 for some of them <laughs> <laughs> right and so uh you know i gained so much i learned so much from those conversations and it forces me to grow and i've made so many mistakes and those mistakes and those experiences allow me to keep those conversations and hopefully not bore the adults that i talk to um and the the second thing for like for people who don't have those experiences uh the older people and uh, i'm saying older as meaning more experienced the more experienced people have to uh continue to have conversation to teach them but with all of those people you have to do in a way where they'll be open to it where uh like if you lecture them then even as pastor sky shared then you're just going to sound like an old person lecturing someone right in, in korean right when we've used this word here on this uh channel before uh, there's a term called old fossil right you're just like oh you young whippersnappers like back in my day like you know like people had you know better values and we worked harder like stuff like that right <laughs> like if you're if you're working and griping and um you just you're just criticizing then you know you do kind of come off as someone who is just uh, critical Right. Whereas like when it comes to uh, doing something, it can't just end up being critical. You have to make it work somehow. And so that is a conversation that we we do. We must have together. And um, even though, you know, Pastor Scott yesterday was talking about having this connection between uh, older and newer people. Um, I believe that it is possible and I believe that we've done it. Like I talk, we talk to each other and we gain from these things all the time. And I now that like he's talked about it, i can see how uncommon that might be in a lot of cases and so you know there's a lot to be said there um i think we can work towards this and it will take time in each person um and we have to continue to make these experiences so that young people can grow and actually that older people can re-experience things that they went through of, of remind themselves and remember the things they did because even as this week said if you forget you die um and so you have to remember older people experienced people you can say whatever you want like even for me too i've been in providence for 27 years there's so many things i've forgotten and only when i remember them am i moved again and am i rekindled again will i give uh love and glory and uh, uh thanksgiving for the grace that i've received 
uh, when I forget, I die in that regard and I don't do that. So it's not a matter of just um, like time. It's not just a matter of we constantly have to do both old and new. And I see like, you know, I deal with my parents and, and other elderly people. Old people forget all the time. And even though they, they, they know, even though they know, they become emotional and it's hard to manage. So everyone has to... Uh, uh, listen to the word everyone has to take action on it everyone has to experience it everyone has to do it and um and the answer is always the word and maybe that is a brash young upstart ta talking uh, i don't believe it is but you know maybe it is but no the answer is always the word do you have a difficult uh, question you have a difficult problem you have something that doesn't work the answer is in the word it always is and always has been that's easy to say Maybe hard to do, but it is the truth of, of the matter. So yeah, that's that's something, and uh, I'll leave it with that for for uh, for that too. And so I you know I hope to see some engagement uh, from everyone about this topic too. Uh, even if you don't write a comment, uh, I know this that one might be kind of difficult to chime in on, unless you have something burning you want to say. But you know, feel free to message me, and when I see you in person at any point, I would love to uh, have conversations with you about this because each person listening to this has a different experience you have been here a different length of time you're from a different part of the world you're from a different context a different family a different language a different culture and so i have something that i must learn from you and i have some uh, facet of the word that i must realize from you so i would love to have a conversation about this going forward and i hope that many people have that conversation with each other too the last thing that i'll share is a quick story um there's so much to do with this but this is one of the big things that happened this week that i was so like like, I was floored by this too. And I, I'm not easily impressed, right? So like, like when it moves me, I'm like, dang, like, and I think, um, but I, I'll also say that people who are unimpressed are also people who aren't looking carefully enough, right? And that happens with the word too, right? And something talks about this too. When people look at women and they don't value, it's because they don't understand. So if I didn't understand this, I don't think I would value it. And I, I could easily not value this too. But uh, this week I talked about how um, I finished translating the peace soccer book and I was two weeks behind on this. I wanted to be done like each day I was doing like 20 pages and that's doable. It, it would vary and it would typically take a couple hours and sometimes I would pray for the miracle of sun stop and it would be faster. But it would take me like maybe three hours, four hours if I had to do something uh, in between. And sometimes it would take me like two right, or one or two. Um, and so it took me long. Like I was like, man, like I have a hundred pages left. I could do it in a week. And it took me like two, three weeks to get through this last part. But so I was at a cafe and I was like determined, okay, I have 30 pages left. I'm going to finish this today. Um, but I wasn't like driven to do that. I was like, okay, I'm going to work on every single page and I'm going to get just, just keep going. I'm not going to think about, uh, the end, the goal. I'm not going to look forward and, and think about how much i have left to do i'm just going to work on every single page every single word and so i was at a cafe working on this right and so while i was like working on it um a guy sat down next to me and um like he uh it, it, there were a couple things that happened one like uh i had my coffee uh propped up behind my computer and so there was like a time where I pushed my laptop screen backwards to look get look at it from a better angle. And I forgot the coffee cup was there. And so it like tipped over and it, it was uh, it spilled and it was spilling a little bit. But this guy, he like that was sitting next to me, he like rushed in and he picked it up before it like, you know, spilled everywhere. And so I was like, I was really grateful, right? He didn't have to do that, but he did. And he reached, he did it so fast, right? Like the instant that it happened and that can only happen like the manner in which which he did it, it can only happen if you're perceptive of people and if you're willing to help if you're not willing to help but and but you feel like a, a sense of 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 shame and that you have to do it you maybe you would help after it spilled when you see them like kind of trying to clean up maybe you'll like help out or something like that but this guy he 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 picked it up right away which means he was willing to interject himself into my life to prevent this thing from happening uh and then afterwards he smiled and, and i was like thank you and i was like like even from that moment i had a pretty good um uh impression of him but i wasn't thinking too deeply about him because i was just so focused on writing the uh, and on translating this peace soccer book but while i kept working you know because this guy did this i was like kind of curious i was just kind of like keeping him in my peripheral vision um and i saw that he was watching soccer like he was watching the euro league and um, I'm 
okay with talking to strangers like i am i'm i think it's interesting right like if i have something that i i uh, am interested about like i completely don't mind talking to strangers like, i think you know i love talking to people um and so you know i was okay but when i focus on something and i'm not like i'm not in the mood to talk to people that that's when i may not want to right so i was like man i'm like working on this book i I am curious because he is taught he is watching soccer, but I don't really want to engage in, in talking to him. But you know, like I was like, but I, I feel like I should at least say something. I wish I should at least comment, right? So like after like working on the book a little bit, I was like, hey, like, you know, do you like enjoy soccer, right? Like I see you're watching the game. And he's like, Yeah, like man, like, you know, I was like busy, caught up on work, so I wasn't able to catch the game. So I'm like just watching it. He's like, Do you like soccer too? And I was like, Well, actually, you know, like uh, not not really like i i don't like have a team i follow like i don't like you know um like watch soccer but you know i'm translating this book and i and i conveniently have the book right next to me right so i'm translating this book you know my pastor wrote this book about soccer and all the things that god taught him about life and about how to uh live and uh give glory to god like through soccer right and it contains all of the the, the life lessons that he's lived through this thing uh through through soccer and the guy was like so impressed he's like wow like that's crazy like you know he was like i would love to read it when it's done and I'm like oh yeah like I don't know what that's going to be like but like um so i ha we had this interaction we were talking a little bit um i, I shared this and um I, I we know we just went back to our work and he went back to doing his work and i was doing my thing and several times like i was like huh maybe i kind of want to talk to him again um and try to introduce the word in, in some way uh, but i i kept working and i think i don't know at one point it was at, at some point um I was like, man, maybe it's fine. Maybe I don't need to talk to him. But then I think I like checked my watch at the time. And then I saw the number like 117 something, 117 something on there. I think if it was 316, I would have like talked to him right away. Just because, you know, it's just like just such an obvious sign if it's 316, right? But it was 117. And so I was like, okay, like, should I talk to this guy? You know, I just want to finish. I just want to get it done. It's kind of hot here. I don't really want to testify to anyone uh, or, or try to evangelize anyone. But, you know, what, whatever. I'll, I'll talk to him again. So I, I talked to him again. I was like, um, I don't know what I opened up with the second time. But, you know, I just talked to him about this, the, the peace soccer thing. And I was just like asking him how things are going. Like, you know, um uh and and something like that and i share some parts of the book like just we made natural conversation so i think this is the most uh natural way to evangelize testify when you make a natural connection right you're not just interjecting random things in and i wasn't forcefully trying to evangelize him either but i was like after we talked a little bit i was like opening up about um this and it was so shocking because he himself was a uh 1.5 generation immigrant like he came here from like some country in East Africa and he himself was part of a church and he helped lead a church for about a year. And now one of the businesses that he runs is helping church with second generation members. I like that was so shocking. Like he was saying that like in many of these um, uh, churches that he sees, these uh, ethnic and immigrant based churches that he sees, whether they be East African, Korean, Chinese, he says he works with many different kinds. Um, like what he sees is that the first generation is very motivated uh being immigrants too both in terms of their faith in terms of their occupation uh, many of them are highly educated uh and they're very structured in their faith and in the church too but what all of them see is they see a sharp drop down in the engagement of faith in the second generation and so he works uh to try to cultivate the second generation he said he give he like puts them through programs and he said hey like you can do your american thing and and, and be part of your culture uh and then he, he said we will support you for five years uh to do the things and to grow and to do these things uh and then after five years you know that's when the support ends and you have to go do your own thing i, I forgot what specifically what he said but he, he said he was like describing the program to me i was like wow like that's interesting and so like we were talking about various things i share some parts of peace soccer oh i oh i remember the connection now it was there was a section in the book where something was talking about uh maradona in like i don't know what world cup it was it was like way before i was born i think it was like somewhere in the 80s but like how how uh uh maradona 
uh, goes to the end and to the extreme in order to persevere and make it through, like to go past his opponents to score in the same way that we have to do that in terms of our life and our faith. And we can't be deterred by the obstacles and the opponents that we face. And we have to go to the end. It was something like that. And so I shared that with him. I was like, hey, yeah, like, you know, like, um, and I, yeah, I don't know exactly what I said, but I was sharing this part with him. I was like, yeah, like this is the kind of stuff that's in this book that I want to, that I've been, I'm working on. And so we connected and we, I told him, yeah, dude, your exact, your story, your second in story, that's exactly the same things that I went through. And, um, and I even did a project on this in college about 1.5 generation immigrants and about um, how we relate to both our culture back at home and sometimes our new culture and sometimes not so well with our old culture or with their new culture. These kinds of things, this uh, journey of faith too, of like, you know, kind of losing interest to some degree and then rekindling it, right? Like uh, I went through all of those things and he was like, wow, like, so we connected, I got his contact information. Um, I could tell, maybe this is me reading into it. I could tell he's kind of at a place where he's not extremely active in his faith at least in his heart. Like that's like the vibe I got that he's not, I guess if we have to describe it in a way, maybe we do a lot in Providence. He's not like on fire right now. He's not like doing well in his faith. <laughs> like that's maybe how I would describe it. Like that's the vibe I got from him because he didn't lead off with faith like, in discussing it. He only like got more excited and talked about it after I was sharing like what I've been doing these last few years with the things that have been happening and those kind of things and shares parts of my experiences. But I felt that he was open opening up and he could feel that there was some sort of important connection here does that mean that he was ready to learn the bible and that i even approached him about it no like we had that conversation uh, he gave me his contact information i told him that i'm moving um to you know, florida in uh, exactly a month but he said yeah next time you're in town let's grab dinner Right. So I was like, yeah, like bet, like, you know, I'll be here in November for a wedding. And so I'll make sure to hit you up then. And so afterwards I texted him, you know, I, I, I gave him, you know, uh, my contact information. I said, Hey, it was like, nice meeting you. And I uh, recounted some things and I told him I would pray for him. He didn't respond to that. So this is why, right. He may not be exactly ready but the seeds were sown in this right so uh, anyways i just wanted to share the story and i think it was like you know i, I don't want to say like specifically what the morals might be or whatever the point of the stories were but you know this happened while working on translating peace soccer and it was so natural and easy to testify because there was something i was doing and it was easy to talk to him right it wasn't like i wasn't like fretful like oh like what i talk about with this person i made the connection with soccer something easy to talk about something related to what we were doing and so i think uh, for each of us uh we can, we should do this in our daily life right not just uh street evangelizing in a awkward way in a way that's awkward for us it's not maybe not even be awkward for the person we're talking to. it's awkward for us because it's uh foreign to us it's weird for us we're not talking and thinking about the things related to us but our our life of faith and one of the things that we uh, have always learned is that uh, don't we're not inventing ways to uh, invite the Trinity into our lives, like making new work in our lives in order to put the word into practice. Instead, one of the things that we know about faith is the things that we're already doing in our life. That's where we incorporate God into it, and that becomes an everyday life of faith. So I think through those experiences, we accumulate the things that we can easily talk to people about. Like one of the things I remember from Pastor Sky like a long time ago, and this might be, I guess, a weird way to say that we apply uh, the word in this context, but I, I guess this is an example of doing things naturally. And one of the things he 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 does is he really enjoys coffee, right? So I remember like um that when he's in Malaysia, sometimes they would go cafe. Uh, hopping and then try coffee in different places and they naturally talk about um like because people know he's a pastor they'll eventually ask questions as they're bonding as they're naturally talking about coffee and experiencing these different things um and so it's evangelism it's honest because we're talking about things that we really care about and because we have integrated our lives with the word with our experiences with the things that something teaches us it's easy to talk about we're not doing things abnormally like one of the things that pastor sky um shared was like he went to that church right with that um uh, mentalist church thing right <laughs> so like these people naturally talk about their faith 
right? It's not a weird thing. We may think that there are some things weird about us, some things that are hard to describe, but it's not because it's our life. It's integrating the word into our lives. It's putting it into practice. At first, it's not easy. At first, it it uh, takes trials. It takes multiple trials of doing this, not by going out and talking to other people, by, but by doing it in our life. And then it'll become easy. Right. It's like with with the peace soccer thing, too. You have to work on it and try it in order for it to get better. And just because I did this once, like, is it going to be easy the next time? Maybe not. But that's the aspect also of continually doing it until the end. Right. Like we have to continue to do these things. If you do it once, it's it's not it. If you did it, you know, between a certain uh, age and time frame in your life, that's not it either. You have to do it and you have to be the salt of the earth. You can't use your lose your flavor you have to continue to save lives uh and uh i guess related to the the topic of self-love from yesterday you have to continue to uh upgrade yourself and take care of yourself and uh improve yourself as this form of self-love too and that improvement that that growth and that self-love comes from applying the word into your lives and, and becoming more and more integrated by it i think all of us and um I can say this in this way because all of us in Providence are doing that. We are doing that. You are doing that. I am doing this. Uh, Sunsing, because we know, because Sunsing is the one doing this. Like he's starting from the beginning. Uh, he's showing us how to do that. And so, you know, at some points, like in our faith, we may be in, in different parts. We may be in, in a place where we're uh, alive and we're amazed and shocked by all the word coming out or other other times you know we may be in, in a time where we just listen to the word yeah yeah we're like yeah it's just matter of fact it's just the word it's it's how it is you know it's god's word it's of course it's truth and we may have that kind of uh, thought process but as we continue to live this faith if we continue to do it then we will uh, find that way to make sure that god is part of our life and be able to become the salt of the earth the light that uh, shines through the darkness that we must not hide away uh, but we have to lift up from the top of the hill so that people in the darkness can see and so yes i hope that this week will be a week in which everyone can do that i really hope to hear your stories from this week it was a lot like today like right now this is probably the latest that i've recorded this uh, episode um in the time that i've done this it's already like past 10 p.m my time and it's been an exhausting weekend but you know i gained so much from doing this today uh, even more so than in, in other weeks i feel uh, and so I really thank you guys. I, I thank you so much for your encouraging words. Uh, I don't uh, ask you to comment or to talk to me because I need encouragement, but it is encouraging to hear from you. And I just love like as like I said, like uh, I'm comfortable and I enjoy talking to strangers. But more than that, I love talking to Providence people and hearing from you, even just a hello, even a random thing. Like people texted me about random things this week. And I, I was happy to hear from you guys. So uh, I would love to uh, speak with you guys further, meet you in person. Uh, and before uh, even pray for each other spiritually and meet with each other in the spiritual world too. So I thank you guys and I will catch you all on next week's episode of the Tuesday segment of the MSD on 117. 7.8.